The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your amp lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Where is your treasure? What is your purpose? Amen. Amen. What is your purpose? Why are you here? What is your purpose in life? Three stories. And it should scare you a little bit that I don't have a manuscript. <laughs> this could take some time. <laughs> so I heard the knock at the door of my office. And I opened it. And it was a member of our youth group at my old church. And she came in, gaunt, skinny, terrified. And she sat down across from me and said to me, I'm so afraid, but you can't tell anyone. Because I've taken 70 pills to kill myself. Don't tell anyone. And I said, nope. <laughs> And so off we went to the ER. And there her stomach was pumped. There she reconciled what she had done and knew she had to reach out for help. And talking to her in Copestone later, I asked her, what was going through your mind? Why would you do that? And she said, I've got no purpose. I don't know what I believe. I don't know who to love. I've got no purpose. So what's your purpose? What's your purpose here? And yes, she got better and got a master's degree and is now teaching in Israel. And things kind of worked out for her. But I think as a culture, we don't know what our purpose really is. Second story. Bless you. <laughs> Her name was Joanna. And she had one purpose in life. Snicker doodles. I'm not kidding you. Every time I came into the office, there was a pile of snicker doodles because she was trying to make me fat. <laughs> and she eventually got sick and went into hospice care. But still, even there, at the hospice care, she would make us snickerdoodles. Because she said, I need to give you love in the form of cookies. And so, my good friend, 
and now Bishop of East Tennessee and mentor at All Souls the Cathedral said, Thomas, you've been ordained six months. We're going to do a pastoral care visit, and I'll show you how it's done. <sighs> so off we went, Brian and myself, and walking in the door and seeing Joanne there, helpless, weak, and feeble. She said, oh my God, Brian, Thomas, I just remembered. I haven't sent in my pledge. And Brian said, that's why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> and in her bed, shrinking up slowly, she said, oh my God, oh my God. And I said, Brian, let me show you how this is done. <laughs> But what she said is, my purpose in life is love. And when I couldn't show it to the homeless and those are hurt, only way I could do it was through snickerdoodles. And each one she made was filled with her love. Third story. I was 17, and believe me, I hit 17 really hard. I had long, stringy hair, pimples, anger, and no idea why. And I was in church, and there were two members who were upset about some of the politics going on in the world. So in the middle of the service, they stood up and walked seven times around the congregation. Seeing the priests, as he was like, they're not going to fall down, okay? <laughs> We're okay. We're okay. But seven times. And talking later to them, they said, you know what our world does not have enough of? Is love. And we have so much judgment. So much judgment. So, my youth group member had no purpose. Joanna had one purpose of love, and that couple had one thing they were doing, walking around to tear down these walls. Not literally. Um, Ernie, we're okay. <laughs> but they were saying the church does not belong in these walls. It belongs out there. Now, we've got lots going on in our country. You may have noticed. Lots of darkness. Lots of hatred. Lots of indiscriminate killing of people. And there's one thing we need to do as a church is this. Tear down these walls, figuratively. <laughs> Tear down these walls and make sure we go out into the world full of love. Because one thing that we need more of right now is love and concern. And we cannot face all the bloodshed all the hatred. We cannot face all this with prejudice in our head, but only with love. So here's my challenge to everyone, including myself. Go out and love. And if you don't mind, I do love snickerdoodles. <laughs> Amen.